So, I quit shooting video portraits. Sounds a little dramatic, right? I want to involve you in my thought process and take you on my little filmmaking journey so far. This is my new little audio setup here with the Zoom H4n Pro uh, now on the stand so I can talk freely with my hands. I'm talking to it really closely, so I think the audio quality is gonna be really fine and I feel much more natural talking in a normal tone to you. So it's not so set up and it's just like I'm talking to a friend. I really feel that vibe. So let's jump a little bit back on my early journey as a filmmaker. Uh, I started like many of you with a simple action cam, the GoPro 4 Silver, the first one with an actual screen on the GoPro. I watched the GoPro commercial and I thought, man, these video look just perfect. I will never need any uh, better camera than the GoPro. I will just do the craziest stuff with that. I went on holidays with some friends, experimented with angles, mounting it on myself, diving. I actually learned how to cut on beat uh, with Call of Duty montages. Uh, we used to play a lot of Call of Duty in school and um, yeah, I um, did these little kill streak montages so I had a really basic understanding of on beat editing and I took that to filmmaking. I had no idea about composition, uh, about color grading or about anything else. After my first Mallorca travel edit, edited on music, my friends just went crazy and said, man, that's crazy, you need to do more, it's so cool. <laughs> I think that really I brought in my passion on, I want to achieve really great uh, short films cut on music and um, yeah I want to learn composition I want to learn color grading I want to learn how to achieve certain looks and um, that's when I started to dive into the YouTube tutorial game that's how I found my first uh, big inspirational people like Tim Kellner he was a huge inspiration to me uh, until today with his little travel edits producing his own music he always achieved to create emotional and moody shots out of ordinary scenes like in a hotel room taking a shower just sitting somewhere uh, he worked a lot with light reflections so that really hooked me and um, yeah i went on uh, travels with my a6000 my first real camera and the kit lens to recreate this look kinda and um, my cinematic bangkok was my first travel edit i spent a month in thailand and this was my first bigger uh, travel edit. And in the first two weeks or three weeks, it got 10,000 views on YouTube. Um, back then, uh, that was crazy for me, that people are actually watching what I'm creating, that people are asking how I created certain transitions, the colors. That's when I saw that there's actually a scene behind this. People are interested in learning. And um, yeah, I watched other guys actually making a living out of YouTube, uh, selling their LUTs. Christian Mate Grab was a big influence there. He showed me how to create my own LUTs, his little cinematic vlog stories about life, his travels and his hikes were also a big inspiration. I upgraded to the A6300 a year later, uh, shot the cinematic Jakarta video, which really blew up uh, on YouTube. It had like 200,000 views after a couple of months. Uh, people from Indonesia really loved it and shared it. I was still studying business and sports at this time, but at this point I thought this passion is really ongoing and I can reach people, I can inspire people, and this might be something I want to do for a living. So I started to do some uh, little filmmaking jobs, a wedding there, an event film there, a uh, social media video for a pizzeria over there. And step by step I created a little portfolio. One night like many other nights where I couldn't sleep, I was so inspired laying in bed, just watching YouTube videos. I can remember watching uh, Casey Neistat's videos, his Nike commercial. Um, I was so inspired by this freedom a filmmaker has to create everything he can and I was so hooked by this, um, yeah, the work and the lifestyle. And at this night, I actually decided I want to be a filmmaker. I want to do this for a living. And I went without sleeping. I went to the next tattoo shop in my little town um, and I got this little play button here <laughs> to manifest that I want to be a full-time filmmaker. And uh, that's where it all started, that I thought, um, yeah, I need to go into the industry. 
I need to get a portfolio. I finished my studies in business and sports. And straight after that, I went on a big cruise ship. I uh, got a contract there for four and a half months producing the travel film for the customers. So basically you just run around as a filmmaker, film the shows on the ship, film the excursions, film the people. And then you do like a travel film uh, for the customers and they can buy it at the end of the cruise. Uh, that was really hard work, not really well paid, but you didn't spend anything. You could save the money you earned. I had to finish an edit every day and uh, stream it to the uh, TV screens of each room of the customers so they could rewatch uh, the excursions or the shows already. And if you were doing some mistakes there, everybody would see it and it would be really um, awful. Yeah, so kind of a military school for filmmaking or editing. After these four and a half months, I saved enough money to buy me the A7 three uh, with the 24 to 70 g master and the ronin s that was a really big upgrade my first full frame setup i was going so crazy about the a7 III and the g master combination i'm remembering watching thousands of videos about the g master how sharp it is how i can just do anything on a client job with the 24 to 70 and then back home i started to uh, yeah call agencies call event companies and actually after two or three months i got about three clients did uh, two or three jobs uh, but then corona hit uh, i lost all my jobs in the event industry uh, i was just sitting at home being so sad that uh, I just started and everything got kind of dumped and I couldn't do anything. I just had to wait at home, um, be under welfare for this period. And then I had to come up with another plan. Since I was sitting at home anyways, I decided to go more into the YouTube game, do more tutorials, do more simple uh, free videos by myself. And um, that's how I also came up doing video portraits, meeting models, um, shooting for a day at one or two locations and yeah, just uh, getting it out there. By my travel films, I knew I loved shooting people. I really loved portraits. So I thought video portraits might be the next good step to take. The Sony a7S III was announced in that year and I decided to take a loan uh, to finance the camera, get it right away when it comes out and produce a video every week for at least three months. I called it the A7S III master plan. I was uh, shooting a lot of video portraits, also little short films with a little story in there. After a couple of months in Fuerteventura, I was shooting their Tones of Fuerte. I was also shooting Raquel. Raquel in combination with the hyped A7S III really, really blew up. My sales with the LUTs really went up for a couple of months. I think I made around 5K just with the LUTs uh, for two or three months and I thought, that's it, I made it. Now I'm a full-time YouTube filmmaker. I have nothing to worry about again, <laughs> not knowing how wrong I was. <laughs> After the little hype was over, of course, sales went down again. Sales are always really connected to how many clicks you make. I thought, damn, I didn't make it already, so I need to come up with a new concept. What I always wanted to do is uh, to create a little fashion line, and that's what I came up uh, in the following months uh, with Visual Minds, my first collection produced fairly in Europe. This took a lot of time, a lot of planning, finding the production, doing the right custom cuts for the collection, finding a designer, uh, deciding about the designs. This took me like almost half a year just planning. I also took a loan for that, um, over 20,000 euros um, to finance the production, to finance the campaign, the video campaign. I paid the models, um, I paid the designer and uh, at the end it didn't sell as much as I expected. Of course, you always think, I love this stuff, it's gonna sell out uh, so quickly. <laughs> I was a little bit underestimating that uh, my filmmaking community is not interested so much in fashion. They wanna know more about techniques, uh, camera products, and that increased the financial pressure on me. I had to pay the loan each month around 500 euros for the next four years. I was a little bit stuck and also scared how I will finance um, 
my business and myself in the next years. The most asked questions in my YouTube videos was what filter are you using? I also did several corporations with filter companies and people always wanted to know uh, which diffusion filter I'm using. And that brought up the idea to create actually my own diffusion filter, a look which I love and which I can, yeah, get to my community. At that time I was talking with Haida filters about a corporation um, of their filters, but then I just asked them since there were an original equipment manufacturer company, they were also producing for others, if they could produce my custom diffusion filter. I realized a free prototype for me, I could test it out. And in the beginning of last year in January, I decided to kickstart my own diffusion filter, Marble Glow. This worked super well, videos worked well with the filter, you really like the look. We more than doubled the funding goal at the end. And in this year, the pressure went a little off. I found the right product, which my community loves. It was selling really well, but on the creative aspect on my videos, I was reproducing what worked to generate more filters sales never change the running system uh, i was just recreating video portraits also for the campaigns uh, fastly made but not really satisfying as a creative and on the kickstarter campaign in the beginning of this year 2024 for marble glow vnd i shot a lot of videos in morocco and also mostly video portraits for the campaign at this point i really thought I need to change up things. I'm feeling stuck as a creative. I needed a deeper connection than just an aesthetic visual and I need to go for a story. That's where I decided to make a clean cut and I decided no more video portraits. Now we're gonna go for story-driven short films. Before I was scared that if I change up things and I tried it to do uh, short films like um, the Driven to Explore Bavaria film um, where I was around in the camper doing a little monologue and also um, Trust Your Highs, a little monologue about uh, ups and downs in life but they were not working uh, so well clickwise and in comparison a video portrait which was like one tenth of the work generated much more clicks. So I was a little bit in a dilemma thinking of the business side and also thinking of developing as a creative. But now I decided that I'm not creating for the algorithm. I'm doing filmmaking for myself out of a passion. I want to tell something. I want to transmit my emotions and want to be able to uh, transform them into the medium film. So I think, uh, yeah, it's so much more important to develop and evolve as an artist than just uh, yeah, recreating what already worked. And the beauty about that is I'm not in such a bad position. I have all the equipment, I have connections to models. I just have to start improving my script writing, my shot listing. This doesn't mean that I'm quitting my passion to uh, visual aesthetics. I can spice up my visual aesthetics with a deeper meaning, with a narrative. And I think this is gonna be the next level stuff I'm looking for and which I will be working for in the next months. It's gonna be a lot of work and it's gonna be uncomfortable, but uh, that's where you have to go through as an artist. Uh, I love working on my little camera gear brand. I can also do the campaigns with a narrative, you know? And let me just tell you, thank you. I'm super thankful for the past years. And with your support, you just made it possible for me to reroute as an artist, to rethink what I really want to do. Shooting video portraits was such a great lesson for me. I got so many messages of you that uh, I inspired you with my video portraits, that you uh, also even started with filmmaking, watching my video portraits. And I think this uh, medium video portrait is great to learn filmmaking, great to learn movement, great to learn composition. It was a great part of my filmmaking journey and now it's time to take the next step. I would be glad if some of you who uh, felt inspired by my video portraits uh, will also follow this journey and maybe we can uh, evolve together as a community. This is not the end, this is just the start of something new. See you in the next one. Peace.